We're back. We're live. And this is uh, energy. This is uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And uh, we're talking to Alice Chun. Her middle name is Ming Su. And she's been to a number of schools. I wonder why does MIT stick in my brain? What have you done aside from MIT? You're an academician, aren't you? Yeah, um, I was really a professor of design and material culture at Columbia University. And I taught graduate architecture design. I've also taught at Parsons, the new school for uh, architecture, design, industrial design, lighting design. And I was the director of material technology lab at Parsons. Um, and when I was teaching at Columbia, um, when the Haiti earthquake happened, Basically, we've been witnessing so many natural disasters and so many um, changes happening to our, our environment that I said, this is enough. We need to do something to help. And let's try to start here and see how we can help Haiti. So I changed my studio around to be an innovation studio to help Haiti. And my focus was is solar energy. So we found out when we looked into Haiti in 2010 that only 5% of the country was electrified and everyone was using kerosene lanterns to light their world at night, which is a deadly toxic fuel. Two million children die every year from using kerosene lanterns. There's 500,000 fires from kerosene lanterns in South Africa alone. And People that are living in extreme poverty are spending up to 30% of their income on kerosene to light their world at night. And I thought this is this was the moment where I decided to become a social entrepreneur because if those if that money could be saved, that would allow people to use that money for food, for clothing, for their children, for education, for their kids. And maybe even to start a small business. And so that's when I decided to look into, we researched every single solar light out there in the, in the market. And they were all heavy, bulky, utilitarian looking and hard plastic that's not recyclable. And I grew up doing origami. My mother taught me origami when I was a little girl. And I designed a solar lamp based on the origami balloon. And this is this is our product, which is a flat light. And it has three settings and it pops open into a cube. And it's um, extremely light and beautiful. It's made out of stale cloth material. Basically, you can fit hundreds in a box. The other lanterns, you can only fit like eight in a box. So you save on shipping costs and you save um, money um, that way, but also in deployment for disaster relief, you can get immediately many, many solar lights out there to people who need them most. And the reason why I decided to focus on solar energy and solar innovation was because um, when my son was born with asthma, I realized that the number of kids that have asthma these days is phenomenal and has increased by leaps and bounds from when I was a kid. And I did research and, you know, there's a saying that a worried mom does better research than the FBI. Well, <laughs> that's what I did. And one out of four kids had asthma in New York City. Now it's 50%. And in our humanitarian aid, when we were helping in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico has 75% people have, have asthma. And it's because of the environment, the pollution from our buildings, from cars, from um, our HVAC, from heating and cooling, all of that creating energy, from charging our phones. That's creating um, pollution from carbon emissions and, and fossil fuels. So. 75% of the pollution comes from buildings in urban areas, and especially in New York. And it's too early in our gene pool for us to be changing this rapidly. So it has to be because of our environment. And so that's why I decided to focus on solar technology. 
And me coming from a materials technology background and sustainability, I research every material and we use recyclable material, we use non-toxic material, PVC, which is a terrible material. We no PVC in any of our, our products. And solar energy, you know, the sun is the most amazing source of energy, the most powerful source of energy that comes to the earth every day. It's enough energy to light 7 billion light bulbs for an entire lifetime and in just one day. And so at our company, and when I, when I, I travel around the world also teaching children about solar energy in regions that, you know, I actually just came back from Haiti after the earthquake just last year. And I tell them the story about how powerful the sun is, but you know what? The light of your imagination and the light of your heart is more powerful than the sun. And if you fight with that light, there's nothing you can't do. And we believe that absolutely. That's why we started this company to help those in need and to also teach children the, the future of our planet about the power of, of the light that's inside all of us, the genius that's inside all of us that we're all born with and to, to spur on curiosity, invention and innovation. Um, so I, I was actually just on a call this morning with a group of a, a community in Detroit where there's, you know, there's a huge section of the community there that live well below the poverty line and children that are in underserved communities. And I'm planning on having virtual seminars with those kids to teach them about solar technology as well. And um, this is just, it's a small solar light. But if we all use one of these lights just for one hour a day, every day for a year, we can save 90 pounds of carbon emissions. Like just one person can just using this little light for an hour every day, 90 pounds of carbon emissions. And you, if you multiply that by everyone in the country, you're saving about 11 billion tons of carbon emissions, which is incredible. And that's why we really believe in, in um, our saying, which is, which is small things matter, design matters. And if we all work together doing one small thing, we can change the world. Because everyone, each one of us did something for the demise of the planet. We all did one little thing like throwing away a plastic bottle or, you know, using diesel fuel for, for our cars. And this led to the demise of the planet. But I believe that we all can heal the planet if we all do something small. And so that's our story for Solite Design. And um, actually, we have a much larger, larger um, product. This is called the Quinn, and it opens up like a book. It fans out and then turns into a cube. And this also lights up, and it also charges a phone. So there's two big solar panels here, and you can charge your phone, and this will last if you have a power outage, that's another thing is the grid, our infrastructure is getting old, but our population is growing. And so there's only so much our infrastructure can handle unless we build more infrastructure. So we have like 20% increase in power outages every year. And, and as you know, we have more and more um, natural disasters where you know, in Utah, we have fires for the first time. Um, Texas was, was getting snow for the first time in, in 10 years. So because we have more power outages, if you, if you have this lamp, this big lamp, this will give you four days of light con constant, and you can charge your phone as well. So how can I sign up for your class, Alice? 
um you can join us i mean like i'll let you know when when we schedule these these classes with kids um i teach them origami well before the pandemic uh we recycle and um at the end of the life cycle of of the solar puff the solar puff lamp um you can send in the circuit and we'll take care of it and we use the circuit for teaching so the mm. kids can see this is a solar panel this is what a circuit is these are leds this is the controller and this circuit is the mind it's the brain behind this lamp and um it's a lot of fun but most importantly we we like to spur on curiosity and, and questions because we believe that you know having the right answer is how we've been taught our whole lives but but when you're out in reality it's the questions that really matter the most mm. so um you got intellectual property protection on this yes i have a few patents i have a patent on the quinn i have um this big lamp i have a patent on the solar puff and i've actually i i did another patent during the pandemic i invented a transparent mask that also has filters in it um, because the hearing impaired they need to read lips in order to communicate. And as you know, during the pandemic, we were, you know, we couldn't see people's faces anymore. Um, that's going into clinical trials right now. Um, anyway, so I have- why, yeah. why does that have to go through clinical trials? Well, um, basically we're doing um, more development. We shipped out our first generation masks and now that we have feedback, we're going to do, um, we have a partnership. We actually got- So this mask actually lights your face? Oh, it doesn't light your face, but you can see everyone's face. It's, trans it's transparent. Actually, I have it. I have it here. Um, it, it actually just sticks, it sticks to your face and it doesn't have ear loops or a head harness. It'll just adhere to your face. Hmm. Can it get intellectual property protection on that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I did file a patent, a utility patent for this. And there's filters on the side. Yeah, okay, you can, you can take it off now so I can hear you better. So Alice, this is pretty interesting. I mean, you've you've gone from academician to uh, inventor to uh, entrepreneur. Do you have yeah. partners? Do you have investors? Uh, do you have a manufacturing uh, facility that you can call and have them manufacture your 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 yeah. inventions? Yes, all of the above, Jay. We have a factory and a couple of different factories that we work with in Shenzhen, China, and we um have an investor for Solite Design, and it's been um, a very difficult ride. It's very, it's a very hard journey, but um, I'm so passionate about what we're doing and believe in this product so much that um, we've been able to act, um, actually be featured in a docu-series that is airing on Apple TV September 9th. Oh, that's great. Okay. So, uh, you know, let me ask you some questions about the product. So what's the material of the product that you were, the products you were showing us, the, the lights? Is that, is that uh, plastic or paper or what? So this is PET and it is recyclable. Um, it has no PVC in it, but um, this is a material that I researched a long time to find the perfect material that is strong enough to hold its form, but soft enough to hold and beautiful in that it, it is a perfect diffuser for light. And so there's a triaxial weave in here that you can see, and that gives it its strength. And when the light turns on, it becomes a, a beautiful tube. You have to affirmatively turn it on. Is a switch in the top? 
that yeah. you're, you're turning on and off. But actually, we, it does have a light sensor as well. So if you press the button for three seconds. So okay. now sensing the light in the room. So it turned off, but I'm covering the light sensor, it's turning on. So it looks, um, uh, forgive me, but it looks fragile. Is it fragile? Is it breakable? Or will it last for a while? This should last five, at least five years. Some people have said that it lasted seven years. Um, what fails? The battery fails first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, if I, how do I go through the charging cycle? In other words, uh, how much light do I need to charge it? Once it's charged, how long will it last without light? So I usually just keep this on my windowsill with the solar panel facing up and all day for eight hours. It comes 50% charged and uh, we recommend charging it in the sun when you get it. Uh, the Quinn light, actually you can, you can charge this with a USB port and um, you can rapid charge we recommend rapid charging it when you first get it. You can't um, ship things by air freight with a fully charged battery. So you have to ship them by by air 50% um, charge. Mm. So, um, so once you get it, charge it up and use it. Well, how, much... how, how long will it last? If I charge it all day, will it, will it stay on all night? Yes, it'll it'll last eight to twelve hours. The okay. big one, it'll last it'll last four days straight. Okay. Oh, so you charge it one day and it lasts four days. Yeah, that's pretty good. And what about you know you said put it in the sunlight, but what about there is no sunlight or it's a dark day or who knows what yeah. you don't you don't have the full the full um, uh, sun available. What happens then? On cloudy days, it, it you know it'll be charging at seventy five percent capacity, so it'll take longer. Are you an engineer? I'm an architect. I mean, I my training is an architect, and I would say architecture is the best liberal arts education that you could you could get because you can apply it to to any profession, um, and basically. We're always making models and drawing and well, it's all the, every every architect is an engineer, isn't it true? Yes, yes. In in a way, <laughs> like we have to study structure and we we have to take engineering classes and mechanical engineering and all of that. But but so are you are you selling these devices uh, on Amazon or some you yeah. know, online sales service? Yeah. So I can go on yeah. Amazon right now and I can look up. Um, Solar puff so, or so, solar light design. So light right. design. Yeah. You can Google so light design or solar puff and or just go to our website, so light design.com and you can order our lights there. How much do they cost? So the solar puff, which is our smaller lantern, it's it's uh thirty two dollars. The big lamp, the star shaped one, that one is a hundred and ten dollars. That's the one with the large solar panels and phone charging. And we have different versions of the solar puff. We have the Twilight, which is a mini solar lantern. They all flat pack and they're origami, so um, they fold. And I can take it camping with me. That would be perfect, Jay. Do it. <laughs> It'll be okay. perfect. So uh, this is really an extraordinary device. Are you making any money? Are you a millionaire now? I'm not a millionaire. I am struggling startup, but we have been able to help over a million people worldwide in disaster relief. Um, if you think about one light given to a family, the impact is five people because most most families and communities in, in disaster regions are, are five, at least five people per family. Well, I want to talk about that because among all the, the things you mentioned today, that is very touching that you go out into uh, undeveloped countries uh, like Haiti, for example, and uh, you help them. Do you, do you actually give them the lights? Do you yeah. send them a big package of lights? Who's, who spends the money for that? 
we donate lights, but also our customers have the option to give a light. So they buy to donate a light. So we did send lights to the Ukrainian refugees in Poland and Moldova. Um, and Sometimes, and we work with partners like um, our nonprofit partners that do disaster relief, and they buy our lights at a special discount at wholesale, and they deliver our lights, and they have volunteers that actually distribute them. And I actually have gone on distribution rounds where we do light drops. I went to Puerto Rico a few times delivering lights after Hurricane Maria. I went to um, the little island of Dominica after Hurricane Dorian. Um, I've been to Nigeria. Um, early on, we, we did a lot of field testing. I did five years of field testing in Haiti in the Central Plateau before we actually launched the product. You're aware that uh, there was an article in, I think it was the Times or the Washington Post a couple of days ago about Haiti about how um, you know, the US was really not sufficiently helping Haiti, um, but it was interdicting all the refugees who were trying to get out of Haiti and come to the United States. It was, it's right. a sad article. In fact, we linked it in our, in our uh, daily advisory today because uh, it, was, um, it, it was important. It was an important article. Haiti is an example of a, a civilization, a, a society which has essentially collapsed. And if you want to know about the collapse of societies, you have to study Haiti because it'll show you. It's true. And um, they've been, and you know, the, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. It's only a three hour plane ride from New York. And when you, it, it's extremely sad because to, um, it's not their fault. I mean, we had the embargo where that basically made the whole economy collapse in Haiti and they lost so much. And that's when they plummeted into, into poverty. And there's so many uh, stories. Uh, they had the hurricane and then they had the assassination. And now they have right. gang gangs roaming the streets. There's, there's, no, there's no civil society there anymore, which is very, very tragic. Um, uh, especially in the fact that nobody is helping them. I know. I, I I have to say, like when I first went there back in 2010, it reminded me of Korea, which is where I'm from. And when I was a teenager in Korea, um, there was nothing there. I mean, rubble. There was um, no, just you know, the old kind of squat toilets and no western toilets or anything when I was and it was it was you know a lot of poverty but Korea had one thing which is a lot of people that wanted to work hard they don't they didn't have any oil or diamonds or you know precious stones they just had a lot of people that wanted to work hard and, and Haiti reminded me of Korea there was a lot of rubble but there's so many people, so many people that were willing to work hard and had ambition. Well, maybe there's hope for Haiti. Maybe this, maybe your contributions to them will help. One other thing about you know Asia that you know, uh, 20 years ago I was I was in um, Beijing and they had a ceremony uh, of lanterns. We have this in Hawaii too, lanterns uh, on the water, and uh, there's a candle or some kind of a, you know lighting device inside the lantern. And, and it's made out of paper, and they, they float, and after a while, they don't float. Um, mm -hmm. but, but your devices remind me of this Asian lantern thing. And I, and I wonder yeah. if your design um, you know, is taking you know, the essence of these floating lanterns, because they really look similar. Well, you can float these on water, too. The, the <laughs> solar puff. <laughs> The solar puff can like this this area of the circuit and the solar bo solar board are in oh. one bladder separated from from the the diffuser. So this this part can fill up with water, but it's still waterproof. 
and this one will float for a little while. And then we have another one. This is called the helix, and this one, it twists open. And this one's made out of um, TPU, which is a biodegradable thermoplastic, and this will float more on top of water. Um, and so many, many of these products are used for pools and things like that. Well, you know, this has a, a prospect in, in terms of architecture. Uh, there are avant-garde architects in the US and in, in Europe. I, I, you may know some of them, and they like to design buildings that are really um, very efficient, use clean energy, and, you know, don't, 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 um, they don't take a lot of energy by, by wire. They, they take it from the sun and so forth, a lot of solar. Um, and uh, gee, I, I can see these devices being used in buildings uh, as, as the way you light the building. Of course, the other way, uh, which I don't know if you've considered, is to have a kind of material that transmits the light from outside to inside, uh, so that there's really no space inside that is not lit all day. Of course, you have to have, you have to have the sun shining, um, but the light is transmitted on this kind of plastic. Um, and and it, it comes into the building and you always have light. This is particularly useful um, in commercial retail establishments where, you know, the work day is, is um, you know, the, the time you need the light. And so you, you never have a situation where you don't have light for your, for your staff, employees, visitors, customers, guests, what have you. Um, but, you know, all of this suggests to me, you've shown us, the little one, you've shown us the big one, you've shown us the the one in the middle that twists, the, the helix. Let's see, you've shown us the mask. Um, it's not over for you, is it, Alice? I hope not, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your next project? And if 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 it's secret, then then just you know, don't tell me. But if it's something you can talk about, <laughs> if it's something you can talk about, let's hear about the next, uh, you know, the next chapter of uh, of Soul Light. Um, we're actually we're we're working on another prototype for a um, just the larger version of the Solar Puff that's a bigger cube but also has phone charging, and. Um, I, I had someone approach me to do a dome for um, school children, classroom, like a solar classroom that could be a pod that travels anywhere and could be self-sufficient. But um, these are all in the works right now. And um, the only thing that's definitive, I have filed a patent for uh, the next generation solar pop. Um, but who knows what's going to happen next in terms of if there's, if I see a problem where I could use design to, to help fix it or to create a better solution, then I'll be there. I think you'll ever uh, be a classical architect, you know, design buildings uh, and, you know, no. what architects customarily do. No, you're, you've left, no. <clears throat> that ship has sailed, huh? <laughs> that has long sailed um, into the blue, and <laughs> you never know what what's going to happen in terms of um, you know. I, there's a story that I I I when I when I lecture to the kids that you know the Greeks believed there were two lines of time. So there's two characters of time. One is young and one is old, and the old character of time, his name is Kronos. And he is old with a beard and he's slow and he's predictable. And that line of time is straight. And the young one, his name is Kiaros, the etymology for chaos. And he's young with wings on his ankle and he flits and flies about and he's unpredictable and you, you can't catch him because he doesn't even have hair in the back of his head. He's bald, so you can't catch his hair from the, behind. And when those, and that line of time goes like this, it's unpredictable. 
Now, when those two lines of time intersect, those are the moments of invention. Those are the moments of opportunity. And if you have curiosity and if you have need, that's when invention occurs. Wow. Okay, I want to ask you one last question. We've talked about your, your training, your focus, your interest in helping people. We've talked about your product. Um, we talked about the, um, you know, the, the satisfaction of, of um, like Edisonian, may I say, Edisonian satisfaction in oh, material okay. science and all that. It's, it's impressive. Thank you. And so if I'm just an ordinary Joe Blow watching this program, and meeting you, Alice John, uh, what would you like me to take away? How would you inspire me? Something you've probably said to your classes over time, but how do you inspire me um, to be an entrepreneur, to be an inventor, to, to be the combination of, of the old and the young? Um, well, there's a saying by a wonderful um, poet, his name is Chief Seattle, and he said, humankind has not woven the web of life, but we are but one thread within it. And if we harm that web, we harm ourselves. Everything is interconnected. And so everything that we do, if we do together, we can change the world. Okay, I'll take it from there. And the next show we do, we'll, we'll delve into the political implications of what you've just said. <laughs> Alice Ming Su Chun, uh, the uh, entrepreneur behind uh, Soul Light Design. You can look it up on the web. A very interesting company, product, journey, and person. Thank you, Alice. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. I'm so honored. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.